This is not just any circle. This is a pie chart, but it is 100% Rizio. This is the top four distribution from the 196th Next Play Cup in the OCG, and all top four spots are taken by the tier zero deck in the OCG right now, which is Rizo. It's only less than two months away here in the TCG, and today, as always, we're going to break down the OCG metagame and show you the decks, show you the tech cards that people are playing so that you can pick them up, prepare, test, and see all the variants, because I think OCG creativity is definitely next level. So this is what happens when you take down all the other decks significantly. Phantom Two of Ubel and Nightmare Throne Limited and Snake Eye and of course the Diabelser engine severely hit and even Fiendsmith is getting hit. So there's really nothing left. Of course Tenpai as well. Besides this deck which is at full power and it's really really good because it has an explosive engine, one card combos and tons of non-engine. And you can see that by the trends in the popular deck ranking in the OCG database, the official one. I think this is a really good resource seeing what people are actually building, testing, and succeeding in tournaments with. Malice and Ryzeal all the way to the top. I think Malice, people just like the deck a little bit more in terms of concept because Ryzeal is just like wham, bam, herder, combo, rank four. But Blue Eyes is at number three, which is interesting. We're going to see some lists for that. Ten Pine, of course, Voiceless Voice. Now, all the way to the bottom, you can see like Ryzeal and Artifacts. You can see Ubel and Fiendsmith, Centurion, but those decks are just like two hit to compete with the two new decks that got a first wave of support in Crossover Breakers, which is good, playable, and competitive out of the box, which is rare with deck building sets. The first one is the one I love most. They solved Ashen. OCG just got Ashend in the world premiere pack. And one of the biggest pain points, if you remember from Ashend, was the fact that Awakening of Vados locks you to only pyro monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Or even for the entire turn. But once you activate it, and it's a really, really good card, right? Places a field spell, summons the, adds you the Vados to the hand, but it locks you into pyros. So they figured it out, right? Detonator. The boss monster of the Ryzeal deck is a Pyro. And of course you can utilize Super Poly in a meta where it's tier zero, where some of the monsters of the Ryzeal main deck are also Pyros. You can Super Poly them to get your Ashen Super Poly target, which just requires two Pyros. Field spell that can be popped with Vados. And of course, the fact that this is a rank four toolbox because Priestess is a rank four. They just figured it out. This is going to be the way to play Ashend if you really want to. And I think this is extremely, extremely fun and interesting. And it doesn't seem too toxic, to be honest, <laughs> actually. And another way to play this, again, once you combine this with rank 4s and level 4s, you can fit those engines together. So another deck building archetype from a little bit before, from Valiant Ship Smashers, we got Valmonica with Ryzeal, combining the powers of rank 4s and Link Monsters. The problem is, I think some of the engine locks you into Xyz Summoning, or even Rank 4s, but the toolbox is just really, really good. You're going to see a lot of artifacts in this video. People are playing our artifacts like it's crazy. I think people are mostly afraid of Malice, and it's a shame that Malice, similar to Tri Brigade, is just shut off by one single Lingering Floodgate, which is Lancia. Whenever it's going to be a deck that relies on banishing, Lancia is just going to kill it. And it's definitely a shame. But, you know, sometimes it's going to see play, sometimes it won't. And this is your chance to pick up QCRs at a reasonable price. Now, this is going to be the pure version. This is what you're going to see most of the time. You're going to see a big engine here, even playing Parma, um, which is not super standard. Sakitama Aritama engine to access more rank 4s. And, of course, 7th Tachyon, um, which is still unannounced for the TCG. We don't know when this card arrives, but this card basically reveals a number exceeding your extra deck, adds a monster from your deck that is the same level as that rank with the same attribute. So they use mainly these two cards, which is Masquerade and the Star Seraph number 105. I think maybe this is a battling boxer, and this adds you a fi uh, fire level 4, and a light level 4. Masquerade is all already going up. I think they're going to reprint it, hopefully, sometime soon. 
But this is the list. Four hours is making people play Solemn Strike in the main. So you get four hours, you just set one of these or even two and pass. And of course, Retaliating C is just an incredible card because Shifter. This is going to be Malice, and there are basically two variables to Malice. This is the one is that is a little bit more creative, but it also relies on, it's more of a Cybers deck than a Malice deck. It uses Cybers as an engine, it uses Malice as an engine, but it also utilizes cards like Ibli, the Firewalls, to access the Ibli, Parallel Exceed, and you know, just lock the opponent into links. Because if your opponent is on Ryzeal, Locking them into links is actually incredibly strong, and this is why they play. If you look at the Ryzea list, they all usually have donors uh, for hires. And of course, this is going to be more of a Cybers build than a pure build, but still the x is very standard to what you would see in a Malice deck. They still have Apollosa, so congrats to them. <laughs> and this is going to be the more pure version. We see Dominus Impulse, which is an incredible card. And you can see here that even though it conflicts with Maxi and Flawless, you just activate these before, and it's fine. You can also break boards with it. You can also set it going first. If you set it, you're not under the restriction. And I think the decks that moving forward are going to be playing this card are going to be benefiting more than other decks. Like, if your deck can run it in terms of attribute combinations, it's going to do much better than other decks, and I think we're starting to see that in the TCG today. Two Gold Sarks is a new addition in the OCG, and it's mainly probably to boost this deck that is struggling against Lancia. Um, there's no side here, but this is a very standard build. Now, Blue Eyes White Dragon, the structure was announced, I believe, in for February in the TCG, I want to say, and this is a relatively standard list. Now, the main thing is that the OCG has Baron, and one of the main things is going to be harder for the TCG is the fact that you don't really have a reliable Omni Negate within the deck to, you know, negate Nibiru. Like, if this deck is going to see success, people are just going to counter it with Nibiru, and it's going to be very easy. And I like to see Dark Magician and Blue Eyes cards together, and this is, of course, to use the Ultimate Fusion to summon the Dragon Master Magia. This card needs a reprint, probably like pronto very soon, but it's going to hurt Collector. So I really don't know what Konami is planning to do with that. But this deck is seeing success in the OCG because, again, this is a full power deck with a very strong engine, really good one-card combos, link ones, and people are also combining it with White Forest. The reason why they're doing that is that a Stellar can summon light spellcasters from the deck, which are these two starters for your combo, specifically Sage with Eyes of Blue. So this is essentially the same structure. OCG players are allergic to go over 40 cards, so you will see a lot of one-ups here. I don't necessarily know if I like this build, but they have some limit still legal. Now, another interesting thing here is that the White Forest have a really good combo with the Mud Dragon of the Swamp. I think this is not Mud Dragon of the Swamp, Muddy Mud Dragon, which can perform a fusion summon, and it is also, of course, a fusion substitute. So you can summon this, which is a Synchro 6, which is very easy in White Forest. You summon it, you perform another fusion summon with it as Fallen of Albaz, and then you fusion it with a light monster, Albion, then can banish this as a dragon, um, sorry, as a Dark Magician and itself to summon Dragoon. So essentially, this deck can now access Dragoon and one of the best floodgates in the game, which is Synchro Zone, that this deck is unaffected by, which is cool. This, I like to see. I like to see the demise of Tenpai. This is beautiful to me. And this is what is left, essentially. Um, this is at one, so it definitely shouldn't be in three copies. But I think the main thing I wanted to show up in this list is, of course, the Masked Dragon and this card as well. So Mas Masked Dragon is a very old card in Yu-Gi-Oh! that says that when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one dragon type monster with 1500 attack or less from your deck, which is going to be your Chandra, which is currently limited. So you can start by crashing your Masked Dragon, summoning this, and this in the battle phase is essentially full combo because this can summon 
Pydra from deck. Pydra can, of course, add Sangin Summoning, Sangin Kaiman, and etc. And this is Saga of the Dragon Emperor. Let's see what it does. It's a quick play. You can only use one effect each once per turn. You can activate this card by targeting one dragon monster on your field. That attack is doubled until the end of the turn. If your opponent controls a dragon type monster, the activation cannot be negated. And during your main phase, you can banish this from the graveyard to activate this card. Special summon one dragon exceeds monster from your graveyard or among your banish monsters in defense position. So, um, exceeds monster? Really? Well, this might be a very odd tech in this deck, definitely. But this I found really interesting because, again, one of the biggest problems, and this is probably like a TCG variant because there are some banned cards here, but there are more ways to play rather than just going second. And this deck is built a little bit more for going first, which is combining like O-Lion, Nemesis. You have, of course, a lot of banned cards here in the OCG, specifically Colossus, Aurora Dawn, and, you know, Galaxy Tomahawk. So this is definitely a fantasy deck, but you can play most of this, I think, if you drop this and drop the Fenrir and the Unicorn. It is actually, and of course, one maxi, it is actually OCG legal. So yeah. This was my biggest surprise. I love this deck. Let me know what you guys think about this. Ash End cards maybe are going to be useful in the future, but this video is especially for you to see what are the deep, deep cuts of the decks that you're not going to see anywhere besides my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe for more content like this every single week. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.